Well, in my ministry, I've encountered many married couples who have asked about reproductive technologies such as IVF. And it's not really shocking to me that there would be so many Christians that are asking about these things because the pain of infertility can certainly be great. Uh, many women in particular, they feel great sorrow, they feel great burden over the fact that they're not able to have children. Uh, uh, you see some of that pain on display when you read the Old Testament, when you, when you think through the stories of women in the Old Testament, such as Sarai or, or Rachel or Hannah. Uh, there's a tremendous pain there. Uh, the Bible increasingly talks about how children are a blessing from the Lord. For example, we read in Psalm 127, uh, verse 3, that children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Now, I spend time regularly praying for couples that I, I know to be able to experience the blessing of having children. So at this point, what I want to do is I think it's going to be pretty helpful to talk about some of the modern reproductive technologies and share how I think these particular reproductive technologies are morally acceptable. Some are not, but I believe that these are morally acceptable, acceptable for Christians to take part in. Now, a lot of Christians debate these topics, and it's not my purpose to give all of the views. I'm simply going to share with you what I believe that the Bible would support. And to do this, I want to point out three ethical principles that the Bible holds. And these three principles, I think, will help us answer our questions today. They're as follows. Number one, modern medicine in general is morally good. So we see that Jesus' healing ministry encourages the belief that it is good to help people that are sick. It's good to help people in sickness. We also read in Genesis 128 that Adam and Eve were to subdue the earth. So all of the medicine that we have today is made from the resources found in the earth. Number two, we should treat the unborn child as a human person from the moment of conception. This is important. Psalm 139 says that you knitted me together in my mother's womb. So we see that this baby in his mother's womb was a person. The King David was a person. And there are a number of other passages that speak to the fact that life begins at conception. Number three. God intends that a child should be conceived within the confines of marriage. For example, in Genesis 1.28, God told Adam and his wife Eve to be fruitful and to multiply. There are many passages that speak about sexual relations only occurring within the confines of marriage. And there's no indication anywhere in the Bible whatsoever that God ever considers it morally right for conception to take place outside of the confines of marriage. Therefore, what does this mean? It should be a husband's sperm and the mother's egg. So with these principles in mind, let's take some time and tackle some of these reproductive technologies. But of course, before we do, if you are helped by the video, please go ahead and hit the like button so that will push this video out to more and more and more people that can be blessed by it that are running into the situation they're trying to find answers. All right, so let's take a look at just two reproductive technologies. Number one, artificial incineration by husband, AIH. Now, I don't believe that AIH violates the principles above. It enables a wife to become pregnant by her husband's sperm. The husband's sperm is first collected and then injected into the wife's cervix or uterus using a medical device. So the child is conceived by a man and a woman within the confines of marriage and no unborn person or embryo is destroyed in the process. That's important. Number two, in vitro fertilization without destruction of embryos, IVF. Now that is a key qualifier, without a destruction of embryos. Now IVF is the process of joining together a, a, a woman's egg and a husband's sperm in a laboratory rather than inside of a woman's body. So firstly, in my view, there's nothing wrong then with this taking place in a lab. Some people get all bent out of shape. Hey, well, this is happening in a lab. It's not natural, whatever. Listen, I don't think that there is any biblical support or any biblical warrant for people to say no to IVF simply because it's happening in a lab. That's not the condition that's important. Secondly, I don't think that there should be any moral objection to IVF as long as no human embryo is destroyed in the process. All this process does is it enables an infertile husband and a wife to have children. We live in a fallen world. Sometimes we have to do things a bit differently. It's important, though, to speak about that qualifier that I've mentioned. IVF 
is carried out in a way sometimes where multiple human embryos are destroyed. You see, in order to increase the woman's probability of pregnancy, more of the wife's eggs may be fertilized in laboratory equipment than are actually implanted in her womb. So then, there are three options for handling the remaining embryos. What do you do with them? Number one, freezing. So this preserves the embryos to be used for the future. Number two, anonymously donating the embryos for use for other couples. So this is often called embryo adoption. And number three, allowing the embryos to develop in a lab until they perish, at which time they just end up being discarded. So remember that the issue at hand here is that we must see an embryo as a human life, a human being that has been created in God's image. And how we treat God's image bearers matters. So I would advocate that we avoid having to handle any kind of remaining embryos by only fertilizing one or two eggs and then taking those eggs and implanting them into their mother's womb. Now, it's also important to discuss embryo adoption. Instead of destroying extra embryos, some couples decide to freeze them in case that they want to be able to have children later. And as a result of this, what has happened? As of 2015, there are more than a million frozen embryos in storage in the United States alone. So this is why, once again, I would advocate that people only do one to two embryos and that they implant them both. It would be extremely sad, in my view, to just add to the list of orphans that are needed to be adopted, that are frozen. Now, a word of warning about IVF, the, the cost, of course, could be great. Um, it, it, it's so expensive. And the success rate for IVF is not great as well. It's well under 50%. Maybe it's increased recently, but according to my uh, recent research, that's where it's at. So it really is important to be prayerful about such things as it's important to remember that, that, that Christ is our everything. Christ is, is, is what is, is the person that will make us content. He'll bring us peace. He'll bring us uh, contentment in any circumstances. And the goal is to delight in the Lord and find joy in Him. Even the Apostle Paul could write from prison and be completely content with his circumstances. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has been, once again, smash the like button. And I want to thank you for tuning in, and God bless you in the way.